continuing our study now of differential equations and to this point we've talked about how to solve differential equations analytically through the separation of variables. When that doesn't work, um, there are a couple of ways that we can use instead to approximate the solution to a differential equation. And one of these ways is through the use of slope fields. Slope fields is based on the idea that if you have a differentiable function, a smooth curve, and you take a point and you draw a tangent line, we know from our study that the tangent line approximates the curve at points around the point of tangency. So the idea of a slope field is to take many tangent lines and what I'm going to do here is the tangent line that I just drew I'm just going to I'm just going to shorten it so I just have a little piece of the tangent line. If I were to do the same thing I did above at many different points. So if I were to draw a little tangent line at this point and a little tangent line at this point, etc. And then if I were to take away the red curve that I started with, remember, when you're solving a differential equation, you wouldn't actually know what the original curve was. You wouldn't know that the red curve was the solution. Let's take away that. You'll see that by having a series of little tangent lines, you can get an idea for the flow or the shape of what the solution would be. That's the concept of slope fields, using a series of tangent lines to approximate the solution. It's a visual approach to solving a differential equation, approximating a solution. So let's apply that in this situation. We uh, want to draw a slope field given this differential equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a table of values to show my slopes at different values of x. And so when x is 0 in my original equation, my slope comes out to be negative 1. So all along x equals 0, which is, which is along points on the y-axis, I know that no matter where my actual point to my solution is, the tangent slopes at that point are negative 1. So I'm going to draw a little tangent slope of negative 1, which is something like that, down 1 over 1. Okay, And I'm going to draw them at all these different points, because the, uh, the actual point on the graph could be in many different places. Take some more points. When x is equal to 1 in my differential equation, my slope comes out to 0. So a 0 slope is flat. So I'm going to draw little pieces of tangent slopes of 0 at points where x is equal to 1. When x is equal to 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. The slope is 1. So I'm going to draw tangent slopes of 1 up 1 over 1. Looks like about like that at any point where x is equal to 2 is where, I'm, is where this is happening. x is equal to 3, the slope is 2, so steeper, up 2 over 1, slope like that. Okay, let's go backwards now to negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is slope of negative 2, so that's going the other direction, down 2 over 1. Any point where x is equal to negative 1, I have slopes of negative 2. And one more time for negative 2, negative 2 minus 1 is a slope of negative 3. Steeper still, but falling, negative slopes. And I get my slope field. And what you might notice is that if I follow the flow of the slope fields that I see parabolas fitting into that general pattern. Here's an electronic view of my slope field. And if I click on a given point, you'll see that I get a particular solution passing through that point that follows the flow of the slope fields. If I pick different points, I get different solutions. And so if I keep clicking, I get a whole family of solutions. Now down below, it's asking me to trace a curve, a specific curve, that passes through the point 1, negative 2, which is right there. Okay, so even though there's a whole family of solutions whose derivative is this differential equation, I want the one that passes through 1, negative 2. And so it's going to be something like trying to follow the, the pattern of the slopes the best I can. Something like that. 
Okay, not too surprising if the solution is looking like a quadratic because the derivative of a quadratic would be a linear differential equation. I could actually find that, of course, through my separation of variables. Let's just do that quickly. Let's take my differential equation and separate. So multiply dx to the other side. Integrate. So y plus constant, but I'll put the constant on the other side. There's my general solution. And if I want the specific solution passing through 1, negative 2, plug negative 2 in for y, 1 in for x. A half minus 1 is negative a half brought to the other side would be negative 3 over 2 equals c. And so my particular solution plugging that back in would be that y of x is x squared over 2 minus x minus 3 over 2. Now there are a number of programs for your graphing calculator that you can use to um, represent a slope field for a differential equation. Let me just show you one uh, program that I have. This one asks you to input your uh, differential equation first. So let's do that. That's just x minus 1. And you can also enter your known solution. So I was asked, remember in my question here, to find the particular solution through the point 1, negative 2. So let's type that in. x squared divided by 2. The solution that I came up with was this. And now let's view the slope field with that one particular solution. So my slope field pattern matches what I drew by hand. And here comes my solution through 1, negative 2. Going to jump ahead now to example 4 in your package of materials and look at a more complex differential equation. This differential equation is in terms of x and y. And it's also one that you could not solve algebraically through the separation of variables. And when that happens, this is a perfect time to use slope fields to try to approximate the solution to the differential equation. All right, so let's calculate slopes at various points, x and y. And you can use a table to do this, keep track of your slopes at various different points, x and y. Or you can just, as I like to do, just pick a point and talk it out in my head. So for example, uh, the point right here that I'm pointing at, 0, 0. If I plug 0, 0 in for x and y, I get a slope of 0. So I draw a little tangent slope of 0 there. In my table, that's a slope of 0 at 0, 0. All right, let's do slopes all along the vertical line here at x equals 0. If x is equal to 0, then the slope will be the opposite of the y value. So here I'm at y equals 1, so the slope is its opposite, negative 1. y equals 2, the slope is negative 2. y equals 3, the slope is negative 3, steeper. The slope is negative 1, the slope is opposite, positive 1. Positive 2, positive 3. So the slopes I've calculated are here in the table. Okay, let's calculate slopes along the x-axis. So along the x-axis, y is 0, and so when y is 0, the slope is the value of the x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate of 1 is the slope. So that's 1, slope of 2, slope of 3, slope of 4, slope of negative 1, slope of negative 2, slope of negative 3, steeper. And so those slopes in the table are all along here. Okay. Often there are patterns in the slopes. Here is something else I'll notice as I'm building my slope field, that when the x and the y coordinates are the same, the slopes are going to come out to be 0. Well, x and y are the same along the diagonal y equals x. So at points all along there, I should have tangent slopes of 0. And so I'm just going to draw those in, slopes of 0. And so we get slopes of 0 all along here. Okay, let's keep working away. Let's take a slope at 1, 2. I haven't done this point yet. x is 1, y is 2. Plug it in. 1 minus 2 would be a slope of negative 1 at this point. 
which in my table is down here. Now when I go down to my table, I might notice that, oh, I'm seeing that I have slopes of negative one along this diagonal. Okay, patterns, patterns everywhere. So I'll bet the slope right here is negative one. Let's just test it out and see. X minus Y, negative two minus negative one. Yes, the slope is negative one at negative two, negative one. So I think you're seeing that you can use a lot of patterns to find many of the missing slopes. Along here, I'm betting the slopes are all going to be 1, but let's just make sure. Let's calculate the, the slope at this point. x is 2, y is 1, which is here. 2 minus 1 would be 1, a slope of 1. And I'm seeing diagonal patterns of slopes of 1 all along here. And so I can put those in. All right, so you look for patterns, you calculate individual slopes as you need to, and you slowly build your slope field. I'm just going to check this with my graphing calculator and put my differential equation, which is x minus, now the y is this green y on the 1, so alpha y. And I'm not going to put a particular solution in because I can't solve for one algebraically. Let's just view the slope field. All right, so hopefully you can see that this matches this more or less. The scaling is a bit different, so it looks slightly different. And if I was asked to calculate a particular solution through the point, let's say 0, 1, which is here, I might estimate my solution to be something like that, because that seems to be following the pattern of the slopes. If I had been given a different point here, for example, Maybe the slope would have followed follow, follow this pattern. There's a whole family of solutions for the general solution. Depending on the point you're given, that will give you a particular solution.